I was born into a family of artists. My great-grandmother on my mom's side, Fanny Y. Corey, was a nationally famous artist. She moved to New York City when she was 17 and attended a year of art school, but quit to provide for her sister, who was dying of tuberculosis. By age 19, Fanny had become one of the leading illustrators in the U.S. She illustrated over 40 books and many magazine covers. To provide for her children's college education, Fanny took up cartooning. For 35 years, her Sunny Sayings was published five days a week by King Features Syndicate in newspapers across the country. Her Little Miss Muffet was a rival of Little Orphan Annie. Fanny had an incredible imagination. Her greatest work is her fairy alphabet that was published by her family after her death. She painted 26 exquisite watercolors of fairies and wrote the rhymes to correspond with each letter of the alphabet. Those paintings are now preserved in the Montana Museum of History. In 1969, my dad and mom and I moved to Camino Island into a small house without running water or electricity given to them by mom's father so that dad could be a full-time artist. He was a professional artist for the next 10 years and had two solo shows at the prestigious Fry Art Museum in Seattle. Dad painted wonderful, fresh, crisp watercolor paintings at his studio that he called Sunny Shore Studio because we lived on a plot of land called Sunny Shore Acres. I like to say dad and mom were artist pioneers. We were very poor, but happy because we were doing what we loved. Mom made sure I had paint and paint brushes and paper growing up and dad let me paint at his side. And when I got older, in his studio, made out of a converted fox shed. In 1979, dad went to work at Boeing to provide for our growing family. My artist awakening happened in 1985. I was 16. I went into dad's studio and painted a full sheet watercolor, which finished in the top seven in the Washington State Scholastic Art Contest. Mom was my biggest encourager in my painting journey. She was an artist too, painting soft watercolors, and then more recently, acrylics inspired by my brother Jed who is a professional artist and just recently launched Acrylic University. Dad was my biggest critic. He always pointed out what was wrong with my paintings, what I could do better. You need both to flourish as an artist, encourager and critic. I attended Western Baptist College, now Corbin University in Salem, Oregon. They didn't have an art program, but they did have cute girls. I fell in love with one, named Jenny Wallace. My senior year, I held an art show at Western to help Jenny pay her tuition. It sold out. I'm so thankful for the friends, collectors, and patrons who over the years have appreciated and purchased my art. After Jenny and I got married in 1992, I did a one-year pastoral internship at Camino Chapel on Camino Island. I painted a lot that year too and had considerable success. I was accepted into many national and international watercolor competitions. I even published a few art newsletters called Sunny Sayings. I considered going into art full-time, but put down my paintbrushes to attend seminary. In my first job as an assistant pastor at Green Lake Presbyterian Church in Seattle, I organized art nights that wove art and film, music and poetry and dance together to explore universal themes like longing, beauty, and love. In 2002, our family moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, where I served as pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church, a new church that had just purchased a historic First Presbyterian building that had been abandoned and then turned into an art and cultural center. After I got there, the Board of Elders decided to create a separate not-for-profit organization called the Harrison Center for the Arts. For the next 13 years, the congregation and the Harrison Center gracefully shared the building. The facility eventually became home to four art galleries, 35 artist studios, and monthly art openings. 
Over 100,000 people came through the building for art events each year. I had two solo art shows in the beautiful gallery over those years, so I didn't completely give up painting. In January 2015, mom called and told me that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. That opened up my heart to move back to Washington to be there for dad and mom. Mom's diagnosis also made me realize that it was fear holding me back from building a creative studio that I had dreamed of and planned on for over a decade. On a piece of property, dad and mom had gifted me just south of their home on Camino. Since 1998, I had worked on this piece of land, clearing brush, tearing down an old cottage, having the land graded, but fear kept me from pulling the trigger. After all, I wasn't living in Washington at the time, but now I decided to go for it. I pulled the trigger before I knew we were moving back to Washington. In September 2015, our family moved to Redmond, Washington, where I now work as pastor of a Presbyterian church. In December 2015, we broke ground on Sunny Shore Studio. We're building Sunny Shore Studio to share the beauty of Camino Island with the world. And I'm really excited because this has been a lifelong dream of Jason's and it's hard to imagine it's actually happening. So we're going to do some brown breaking today and uh, celebrate with our family. And building began in earnest in March of 2016. The grand opening of Sunny Shore Studio was December 2016. And the mission of our creative studio is to share beauty through art, books, and film. Since our opening, we have held quarterly art openings, like our upcoming Vintage Watercolorists of Washington show that celebrates the life and legacy of some of the greatest living watercolorists in Washington. We've published a number of books that weave words and art to tell stories about people and the places they love, like Beaches of Camano, Jack Dorsey, Sketch of an Artist, Queen of Montana Beach, a biography about my great-grandmother, Fanny Corey, and the second in my series of 12 children's picture books, I Remember Running Through the Woods. We've also made films, my first film being a documentary of Fanny titled Fanny the Artist Who Made America Smile. I'm currently working on a documentary of an inner city high school basketball team that against all odds won the Indiana State Basketball Championship and inspired a whole city in doing so. It's titled, We Are Family. Have a group of individuals that they can look up to that tells them that anything is possible. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter where you go to school. It doesn't matter that you can be a champion. I've even made some playful videos of my quest oh, yeah. to sight a real life fairy with my mom, who's a fairy. Oh. <laughs> I call them. Oh fairy wow! Sighting. Was there one in there? There, I, there I, yeah. I'm pretty. <laughs> did you see it, Betty? Did you? I'm sure I saw it. In November, I partnered with my brother Jed and his acrylic university to create an access to art program that provides artistically gifted youth ages 15 to 22 with access to high quality art instruction, art supplies, and an encouraging art community. We have three young people in our pilot program. Currently, I'm planning a month-long painting trip with my daughter, Jackie, a senior at Redmond High School. Jackie is going to create a sketching and painting journal of our travels, and I'll paint the scenes along Highway 101 from San Diego to the Olympic Peninsula. Our goal is to have an art show and sell the paintings and sketches and ultimately to create a coffee table book to help pay for her tuition at Corbin University. I share these stories to show you how I lived an artistic life. Here you are today with all your road before you. Your story will inevitably look different than mine because you are an original. You have your own story to write your own path to walk.